Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another special episode of Herschel Talkers. Got a uh, return, great return guest on the show. Got uh, Angry Scott from the Brutal Truth Buckeyes podcast. How are we doing today, Angry Scott? I'm doing pretty good, man. I was only angry at the first half of the Ohio State game. And, um, but then by the end of the game, I didn't, I wasn't had to be angry anymore. My hat kept her blowing off. There you go. We'll, uh, we'll get into that for sure, but Hey, make sure to, uh, like and subscribe, share the podcast. A couple more subscribers. will kind of get our goal for this year. So we really appreciate you out there. And if you'd help us out, jumping right into it, Georgia, number one at the time or number three at the time defeats number one, Tennessee, 27, 13. In a great fashion. Um, I really what I really wanted to touch on, great win, by the way. But earlier in the week, when Georgia was uh bumped down to three, I think that really motivated the team. It gave Kirby Smart um some built bulletin board material, some rat poison, old Nick Seven thing. And then also that pissed him off. Also, when Eric Ainge, the radio ex quarterback, said uh Sanford Stadium's not that loud, Neyland Stalin's waiver. <clears throat> that pissed that pissed the crowd off, and then everyone I hate to say was loving Tennessee on game day, sucking them off. You might know that you, you might think so. Saying everybody's picking them, think um, uh, D- David Pollock and uh, who's the guest picker? I just I just thought the uh, country music guy can't think of him. He picked them. I should know him. Do you remember uh, Scott? Yeah, you yes. know what, man? College game day is fucking three hours, at least an hour too long. So I didn't make it to the end. So I, I've, I know what you're talking about. Country Singer is on there, but I didn't see the end. Exactly. I should know that. I'm sorry. I'm going to get hit. But anyway, all kind of motivation. Everybody was against this. Georgia came with a chip on their shoulder. That defense came out swarming. Six sacks. Shut down Hend- uh, Hendon Hooker, 23 for 33, 195. One interception. I think it probably hurt his uh, – it hurt his uh, Heisman Trophy candidates. Also, a big thing I said earlier in the week, shut down the run because they were quietly, I think, six, they ran at 60% of the time. 42 rushes, 94 yards, 2.2. Big right here. Also, Georgia coming out, having the fumble. I was in New York with a with a crazy Georgia bar. I was like, all right, here we go, man. We're going to give this thing away. But after that, it was smooth sailing. Stetson Bennett, one of his better games, 17 and 25, 257. Two touchdowns, zero picks. Kenny McIntosh, great game, 10 rushes, 52 yards. Bennett with a great run on the, one of the first touchdowns. Could have been targeting. Um, one of the most impressive things is our kicker hit a hit the Australian kicker, I think it was 75 yards. Brent Thorson, like a damn boomerang. Boom, all the way on the one. That was a big play. Georgia convinced winning. Kirby went uh, when it started raining. We're really conservative in the second half. I think we threw four times. So just all out beating, shut them up. I do want to mention this. If you saw this, hey, Scott, call me. Stetson, call me if no one knew about it. He had supposedly six or 700 calls. They leaked his uh, his uh, cell phone number out. All Tennessee fans were blowing him up, sending him texts. It was a distraction. So that's why we had that running touchdown. Another one, he call me. So just great right here. Number one is Georgia rolling, 27-13, shutting everybody up. Impressive win on the Voltards at home in the rain. Great win. Um, I think we got out of there. Robert Bill's going to be back. I was a little scared about it. He had a stinger. And uh, 27-13, great win. What's your thoughts, Scott? So, to, didn't that happen to Tebow years ago? I think that happened to Tebow years ago where yes. they leaked his cell phone and they were so, yeah. against LSU and he did the same kind of thing, man. Here's yeah. the thing about your boy Stetson, man. Is he really 5'11"? Because he, like, he looks like he's 5'8 out there. Am I, am I the only one who thinks that? I think he's – I think he's about five nine, five ten from what I've heard. But hey, getting better. Two two touchdowns. The guy's a winner. You got to look at it. I think he's lost. Uh, he's lost three times in his career. But anyway, why you got to so take, you de- saying, you well, take a I'm job? I'm sure he's padding. I'm sure he's padding those stats, right? You remember Rudy, five foot nothing, hundred nothing. I'm what I'm saying is they say five eleven, and brother, I don't see it. I, I don't think he's that tall. But it doesn't matter, right? right. It doesn't matter. Hey, hey, Trey, would you say that now he's your quarterback? Because over the last uh, year or so before that uh, national championship, you're like, man, I just hope that JT Daniels can get it together because the rest of it we're going to need to win the Natty. When you, you change your uh, – you change how you feel on that yet? I, yeah, he is. I mean, I definitely going in through the year, he's the man right away. I did question him a little bit in a couple of these games. Missouri game he struggled in. Uh, Kent State he struggled. But, hey, 
he he wins he he comes around in big games. He's dependable. So yeah, I'll eat my words. I mean, definitely our guy down the stretch. I don't want to get him hurt or anything. We do have Carson Beck. He's played a little bit, but yeah, he's our guy. Well, I'm a ste- hey, I'm a your, man. He, I'm a Stetson he, man, Scott. He should be your guy. You went you went from Aqua Velvet over Stetson. Stetson exactly. makes it easy for you, right? Well, exactly. he should be your guy. He's in his eighth year of eligibility right now, right? He is. He's a grown ass um, man, Scott. Yeah. Well, here's what I'll say, man. It is scary to see what Georgia could be when um, they get up for a game. Because to to your point, you talked about Missouri, you talked about Kent State. So where they kind of sleepwalking through those games, and it, it happens. We'll talk in another podcast. Ohio State gets Northwestern, maybe sleepwalking, but. Um, but this is the way Georgia plays, man. When they get up, they very much look like the number one team in the country. Here's the thing that's crazy to me is, dude, it was 27-13, so it's a two – it's a, you know, 14-point win. It wasn't even that close, you know. Yep. I mean, it was a it was a beat down. I mean, I think, what, you all are up 24-6 to six at halftime. And, you know, and then you, you didn't really need any other points, but you probably – yeah, it started to rain and you kind of, you know, pulled off a little bit, but you – I mean, I will say this, man. I think you put out a, um, you know, for, here's what you, you put out a game plan of how to beat Tennessee. You just have to have the D backs, uh, um, the defensive backs that can go and just get to go one on one and can't let them. I mean, look, man, he didn't have time to throw. So you, you get pressure on Henry Hooker, then you're in trouble. So, I mean, it Six was great. It was a, it was, it was a severe, severe beat down. I enjoyed it because maybe an Ohio State guy. I want him. I want you to win. I, I don't only want you to win. I want you to win big. So there's only a single SEC team in the playoffs. So, anyways, um, you, you know how I feel about Tennessee fans. So just get them. And look, man, if you want to go ahead and you can hate Alabama fans, that's fine. But at least they got something to cheer for. You can hate Georgia fans. You know, not that I feel that way, but but at least you won that national title, Tennessee, dude, 1998, and you that's haven't right. been even on the map. You haven't even been on the map for. Exactly. Um, what 15 years, 17 years? Exactly. So, what I'm getting at is maybe finish the season and then start talking all that smack. And exactly. still, then look, like you said, I mean, um, bet uh, Stetson, man, he was he was on during the game and they just they didn't have an answer for you. I mean, they showed just how horrible their secondary was. Um, Tennessee did. I mean, you boy Brock Bowers, I still think he's the best receiver, even though he's a tight end, you think he's the best receiver on your uh. Uh, on your team he's one of my top three in the country you know i'm just talking about best you know wide receivers in the country i'd say brock Bowers, marvin harrison jr and i might put in hyatt as the deep threat guy but even though he didn't really do very much on he didn't do much on saturday the other thing i'll say is not only did you shut them down and they they didn't look like tennessee hand and hooker man you're not going to win the heisman off that game you're definitely not going to win the heisman off that game we'll see what happens down the road Right. But, um, yeah, man, Georgia, dominant performance. Um, and, I mean, it could have been worse. That's the thing. It's crazy. It could have been yeah. worse. And you it had that. Uh, if it didn't rain. Had, it looks like, I mean, you had a couple fumbles, and there was the one early in the game, but I think they only got three points off of it, right? So, right. Um, yeah, man, I mean, Georgia definitely looks like the number one team. Yeah, another thing with Brack Bowers, he only had three catches for 27 yards, got a couple of first downs, so he wasn't really a big factor. And our other guy, Darnell Washington, big O, threw some blocks, but he didn't even catch a ball. So we had, like, Ladd McConkey had a great game and Marcus Rosemary Saints, Jack Saints. So we kind of used other guys, uh, you know. I just know they were saying Stetson Bennett couldn't do anything. Y'all can't stop our offense, Tennessee fans. Um, he said we can't get behind them. Y'all haven't played nobody, blah, blah, blah. We just shut them all up. So, hey, great, great win for uh, Georgia. That's all I got to say. Hot mic, drop the mic, walk away. Take, well, take I mean, your... I'll say this. You know, the first half, the game was over in the first half. They couldn't stop you on offense, and they couldn't do anything. They couldn't do anything on their offense. And then, hey, you played the second half. Nothing crazy happened. There's a lot of crazy things. Man, I think this is probably the craziest uh, Saturday of the year so far. You know, yeah. but oh, yeah. I mean, obviously, great showing on uh, George's behalf. Now, who do you got yes. next week? Sisters of the Poor. Yeah, actually, we got Mississippi State. <clears throat> All right, so this is going to be interesting. We can look at this. So, sixteen point spread. A lot of people earlier in the year. Ooh, raw t- a lot of people earlier in the year um, said that this is going to be one of the tougher games because they got the cowbells on the road. It's going to be a night game, and 
this is actually um, one of the games that I was nervous about and, and with Kentucky because they throw it about 50 or 60 times. It's um, Mike Leach, and I just think it's going to be tough. They actually um, really pushed us two years ago. It was a COVID year. We couldn't really stop them. We had JT Daniels had to throw for 400 yards to beat them. So I'm a little uh, actually nervous about this game because we're coming off, um, you know, emotional game on the road. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, in Athens. I wouldn't really call them, uh, you know, sisters of the poor, like you said, Scott. But um, anyway, looking at it. Pulling it's up not here, the sorry. strongest the SEC has to offer. How about that? So oh, I know oh, a lot of those SEC yeah. teams, man, in November like to go and like schedule like a Furman or somebody like that. So mm-hmm. or like a South Carolina State or somebody. So I guess, yeah, you got Mississippi State, Kentucky, Georgia. So you kind of have, I mean, you don't want to call them three off weeks, but Mississippi State, man, unless you have a letdown, you should win that game, right? Right. And Kentucky, yeah, you know, I mean, it's at Kentucky. So I don't know. Anything's possible, but. They're ranked. They're going to be ranked, though. Kentucky might be ranked. I think they're 24th. They won. Yeah, well, we saw Kentucky versus Tennessee. So it doesn't mean that just because they beat them down and you beat Tennessee down doesn't mean that you'll beat them down. But you'd think. And then, you know, Georgia, I mean, do they still have Georgia Tech? Do they still have the ball team right now? But yeah, they fired their coach. Yeah, that should be, that should be a little cakewalk. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, look, you still want to go ahead and win out. We're not in the 12 team playoff yet. But, I mean, Unless you slip in the banana peel or something like that over the next couple weeks, you could, in theory, even lose a close SEC championship. Not that you want to, but you could. And, you know, um, still should be in the playoff. I mean, more than any, any other SEC team. So, it'll be interesting. I don't I don't know much about Mississippi State. I'm your boy, Mike Leach. Um, Beacon and Duncan. Yeah. I mean, look, they're not going to run the ball very much, right? Isn't that going to be um, – Yeah. What they call um, it so – they you can't play man against them, and you can't. I think a lot of people like they rush three and drop eight, and you can't play man. You got to play zone. If not, they'll pick you apart. I know we can stop the run. I don't see them run it, but I think if we can just play really good zone, our DBs had a really good challenge last week. It, it's totally different offense. A lot of people think it's similar because they they take a lot of big shots, Tennessee, and these guys are going to dink and dunk. I mean, Will Rogers, um, junior senior, I think he, he's having really good numbers as you see, twenty six touchdown, five pick. Uh, Bama held them, which I think our defense is better than Bama, held them to a jump uh, touchdown at the end, six points. I think they had to score like a couple seconds left. So I just say do that blueprint. Even if this thing's ugly, just win. Um, even if it's by seven to ten, it's close. Just win on the road. These road games are tough. Missouri already scared us to death. I think we win. Uh, I think we'll cover, though. I'm going to go with cover. I like 35-17. They kind of hang around in the first half, maybe even make it tight in third. And I just think we can uh, run the ball on them. We just have more athletes, more depth. I'm going to go 35-17. But this thing could be ugly with the cowbells. I'm not sure how the weather is with the hurricane. I'm going to go 35-17, take, take care of business. But even if it's ugly, just get out of there with no injuries, get Bennett going. Um, so, yeah, i like us to win, hopefully. Yeah, what, what's, the, what's the spread on that game? It's actually 16. It's 16? So you show so was a 35-17, so you have them covering the spread, right? That's right. Because a good, a good team not only wins, they cover the spread, right? Hey, good good teams win, Scott. Great teams cover. And we covered last week, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the only thing you have to see is you have a letdown, it's on the road. And, yeah. I mean, uh, the Mississippi yeah. State is 6-3. and three. Yeah. Uh, You shouldn't have a problem with them, man. But, you know, hey, Ben, this is going to be their Super Bowl. So you're going to get everybody's best shot. That's teams correct. like, yes, I mean, teams like Alabama, teams like Ohio State, teams like uh, Georgia right now, yes, even Clemson, <clears throat> you're getting everybody's best shot. So that's, sure. you know, that's their Super Bowl. So, you know, but otherwise, yeah, I mean, I think um, I'll give you a score. I'll call it uh, 42-17. What do you think about oh, that? Wow. All right, I like it. I like it to be a nice, comfortable win, just big thing, no injuries. We had a scare last week we, since we did lose Nolan Smith the week before in the Florida game, torn peck. We don't need any more injuries on our defense. Get some young guys, but I just think we need to have discipline, DBs, sit back in the zone. Kirby Smart, Will Muschamp, and uh, Glenn Schumann will have a good plan and uh, go down there and beat the cowboy, cowbells up. 
Now, here's um, a question for you about Stetson real quick. Because yeah. on Saturday, I didn't see really any pressure put on him. Have you seen any D-line that's been able to put any pressure on Stetson into making a mistake this year? Missouri uh, caused all kinds of problems. They gave him, I think, sacked him. That's when he kind of tweaked his shoulder a little bit. So, Missouri – had a sneaky good. And that's another thing is we struggled on the road against them. We barely beat them 26-22. Kind of like had it convincing at the end, ran the ball. But that one was, man, we were down 16-6. You probably saw that. Everybody was like, whoa. We had to pull that thing out. That's why I'm a little scared on the road at night. Last time we played a road SEC game. So anything can happen. It gets loud there. And start Vegas, as they call it. But uh, yep. we'll see. And then, you know, before, before that game um, – Scott, I might be a little nervous, so you know what I need. I need some Viva Tequila Seltzer. That's what I need. Zero calories, zero Vicodin carbs. What's that? I thought you were going to say like Vicodin or something. Well, I, I'm a, I don't really do that, but uh, I did drink, <laughs> I, I drank a Bud Light Seltzer at uh, American Whiskey in New York because that's the only thing that they, could, they had. You had to stand up the whole time. Great, great shout out there. Yeah, that place is packed. George, it was Georgia dogs everywhere, but anyway. I like elderberry. You got huckleberry, grapefruit, watermelon, live long, live well, live it up. Uh, maybe we'll actually let Scott try one of these and actually get it to him. That's a whole other story. Would, also, would you uh, <laughs> would you say that it, it, it'll help you influence your next bad decision? It can. With a girl or doing other things, it can have you do a bad decision. If you want 20% off, here's 20% off uh, discount code HUSTLE for 20% off for vivatequila.com, uh, Viva Tequila Seltzer. Also follow them at Viva Seltzer on Instagram, the IG. Well, I was going to get your uh, your quick thoughts on the rankings. I'll give you mine yeah. real quick. Your yeah, thoughts we can uh... – Man, it's, it's exactly what I thought it was going to be. You get right the, here, sir. The rankings. And the, if you look at it, the thing that, that stood out to me is – and I don't – you hardly ever see this, but the college football rankings um, – the first eight exactly matches what the AP Top 25 is, which is something you never see. Now, for what it's worth, though, I think they got it right. You know, you've got Georgia. If, you know, if Georgia keeps playing like they do, I mean, you could probably even have a close loss and still get in. You know, Ohio State, Michigan. Um, I'm hoping Bucks win big. But um, I think if Michigan loses, they might be out. They might be out because they're, they're – um, out of conference schedule is just garbage, man. But – um, there's a chance Ohio State loses close. They might be in TCU, man. Look, in SEC country, you might not like it, but they're undefeated. If they're undefeated, you're not gonna, they're not gonna, they're not gonna take them out. In Tennessee, you're sitting there at five. But if you're a Tennessee fan, uh, you'd be concerned. Uh, uh oh, what if? Um, I don't think it'll happen. But if LSU does go on to win the SEC championship and they put them in there, well, then it's them of Georgia. So you know that's what's gonna happen. Or if there's a close game between Ohio State and Michigan, and there's one loss they put them in. The other thing, too, man, is I still think with uh, – look, both the Tennessee and Oregon lost to Georgia were just beatdowns. It's just the one was a 46-point beatdown, and the other one was a 14-point beatdown. So it could have been worse. I was hoping it was going to be even worse. I think it could have been worse. It was 24-6 at halftime. Look, man, I think you all could – if without the range, you definitely could have scored more. But, I mean, I it, I've never seen – Notice they have no other options. Like, hey, it doesn't matter and all the other stuff, dude. I've never seen someone have a 46-point loss and still get in the playoff. In 2016, when Ohio State got in one loss, it was a one loss to at Penn State and a close loss. And everybody was, oh, why did they put in Penn State? I'm like, because they lost by like, dude, they lost. I forget exactly what it was, but they lost like what, over 30 to Michigan that year. So for you to have that big of a loss, that was even though they won the big win the Big Ten. You know, that's part of the reason they left them out. So I just don't see Oregon having a good path left. There's nothing else. The other the other thing you got to watch out for is USC. Okay. And so if USC they only have a um, I think it's a one point loss at Utah, and Utah's pretty good, you know. So it was a two loss Utah. So if they go on to win the Pac 12, it's a good shot, man, that USC would get in as one of those teams, you know. So but you know, but then you're gonna have to choose between assuming Ohio State Michigan wins out, right, that you have to choose between, you know, the loser of that game if it's close and then Georgia and then if TCU wins out. There's a lot of things that could still happen, but that four spot's going to be the one that's up for grabs. I think Bama is probably out because, you know, unless LSU loses again, they're not going to get in there. But the only thing I'll say with Bama, people don't hear this, man, their two losses were both close losses. 
You know what I mean? And LSU, they say, oh, they lost that that week one to Florida State, and that was a close loss. Okay, but you got beat down by Tennessee at home. So, you know, and that, that's why I also think Clemson's out of it, man. I mean, Clemson lost uh, – was a 21-point loss. It wasn't even that close. Notre I mean, Dame. 28 to zero uh, to Notre Dame at one point in time. That's a three-loss Notre Dame team, right, uh, including their uh, – their opening week loss to the Bucks. So we've seen under Notre Dame, man, you see them get up for big games and play down a competition otherwise. So, I mean, they're, they're, they're starting to come together, but it doesn't, doesn't really matter. I mean, I, I will say this. People talk about – I would probably draw a line right there at UCLA. Is there a chance that UCLA, you know, one of those teams in the Pac-12 that has one loss? Maybe, but I think they lost – I want to say UCLA lost big to Oregon. And, I mean, Ole Miss <clears> – <throat> Would, would Ole Miss go and, did, did you know, they had – who they lose? They, they lost to LSU, but I want to say that was a close loss. So, I mean, there's just kind of like one of these no, – was a, You got to uh, see how was, everything plays out, man. It was, you a, know? It, was, it was a beating. It was like 42-20. They pulled away at the end. LSU was a convincing win. I mean, if you want to put – even though I don't think – I want to say LSU and Alabama are probably placeholders, mm-hmm. you know, that there's going to be extreme chaos for those teams to get in. I would probably say below 12. I mean, if you're below the 12 seed, forget about it. You don't even have a shot. Even those other guys are really low. You know, but, I mean, Ole Miss plays Alabama this week. So, what what are your thoughts about it, Trey? Uh, all right, Scott, I uh, hate to get a little critical with you, but um, didn't watch that game, just looking at the box score. All right, man, 21-7 to to a 1-7 in seven Northwestern. I don't know if there was weather involved. And they haven't won. They actually haven't won on U.S. soil. So what happened in that game? When I saw 14-7, and I was in line. It was a long line to get in in New York to get in the Georgia bar. So break break it down from the Ohio State fan. Was that a was that a bad loss or is it just sleepwalking? Or what happened uh, in that game? Well, I, so I couldn't believe look, it. I mean, I I will say this. Here would be my concerns. Uh, here would be my concerns from Ohio State. Yes, mm-hmm. they haven't won a game yet. Northwestern hasn't won a game in the. Um, <laughs> in the United States, their one their one win was in Ireland against Nebraska. So, um, but the other thing I'll say with that is it was 11 a.m. Uh, start Central Standard Time. Um, it was like 35 mile per hour winds. So mm-hmm. when you're with the wind, they even show the the, the guy kicking, um, you know, from 30 yards out, 40 yards out, and it like blew it. It just held up in the air. So that it really really wasn't a good. You know, I want to say like it. Didn't get to the goal. Uh, didn't go through the um, the uprights, but like was held up at the goal line by the um, by the wind and everything. So it wasn't a day that you could go and you could kick or anything. And it was it was a screwy game and everything. It was definitely a time to run the ball. My concern from a Ohio State standpoint is, and I heard somebody else talk about this. The O line is very talented, but they're, they're better in pass defense than running the ball. So they're not getting the push that I'd like. You think of Northwestern, hey, we'd be able to run it down their throats. The only thing I'll say from a um, – and I didn't see that. So is that kind of like our version of what George did against Mizzou and Kent State? You didn't get up, you know, sure. or they did some kind of screwy things. And, hey, man, it was the biggest game that um, – and what you have, you have, what, a four-point win over Mizzou, right? George did. So sure. maybe that was our version of that, and we haven't seen that too much this year. I would say the defense was still stout. And they gave up, you know, seven points. And then we eventually got enough done. But it was a sloppy, ugly game. Concerns, like I said, are not not running the ball. And Northwesterns, man, they're not that good. But here's the other thing I'll say to you, man, is they had the perfect weather for that game. And that's everything. That's that's the whole right. season, man. That would make it all. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, but the, the, the signs of a good team is not only that um, – even though that other team gets up or might get up early in the game, but then you just pound them anyways. <laughs> so, you know, it's kind of a sloppy game for us. I mean, hopefully they play better. They got Indiana coming up this next week. But even though you asked me that question, would you change these rankings at all? That's my question for you. Because I thought uh, – I'll say this before you answer that question. <clears throat> even though we didn't play great, and I was like, oh, we might fall into the rankings. But then I saw everything else that happened on Saturday. It was Michigan, chaos. Michigan slept walk through the first half of Rutgers and then won big and TCU found another way to win. And, you know, Oregon got smashed and, you know, Bama lost and Clemson got, you know, 
drilled. So there was a lot of the chaos. I'd rather have a sloppy game that we win by 14 than lose a game, you know? Exactly. Yeah, to answer your question, I do I do agree um, with these. And I think what else is uh, helping is uh, Michigan's, like, was it non-con schedule? A bunch of – was it Ohio, UConn? That's kind of hurting them a little bit. All right, so let's say let's say what if because, um, all right. So this weekend, for example, I think everybody's expecting TC is going to lose in the next three weeks. They might win, right? But they're actually seven point dogs to a good Texas team, which your boy Quentin Ewers, the mullet. So let's just say, hey, they lose this weekend. All right, they're done. Tennessee probably moves in. If you're a Tennessee fan, what are you what are you hoping on if you went out? They actually. They've got all winnable games. The only one that might be a landmine, which they'll probably win, is at South Carolina. If that's a night game, kind of tough place to play on the road, but they should win. Um, Oregon, you keep hearing more. Okay, looking at this. So, number 25, Washington, they win that. That's a rivalry game. That's That'll pad a little bit, right? So, that means they beat UCLA. Um, they beat a BYU team. And you got Utah, so that's potentially maybe at the time four ranked teams, right? And you'll play Pac-12 championship, which I think they'd take the top two. Is that right? There's not like two divisions. Yeah, so they I might. Think, so they might know, play. I think you're right. I think they, they might they, play they, USC. So you're looking like another top ten team. So that's five ranked teams, and I know they got smoked by Georgia. That's a pretty damn good resume. Um, and, and I I think this. It, and then I think it's not the smartest committee, but you can kind of tell, like, I think from what I've been hearing, the committee's favoring some of the conference championships winners. So does Oregon or USC, I think USC's had pretty, some pretty good wins too. Look at this. I mean, Utah, well, they actually lost to Utah, but they're going to play Notre Dame. If they beat Notre Dame, who could be ranked. UCLA, that might be a good one. So, I mean, they have a pretty good resume. So my question is, does a – Go back down Go back down to that USC schedule. Yeah, I mean, they sure as hell better not lose to Colorado because then they're in big trouble, right? But, but they do have Powell, two back. They, they won only won by six. But that UCLA and that Notre Dame game, that's going to tell you about their season. But they went out yeah. with that, man. I don't know if the Pac-12 has gone to yeah. the two best teams or if they still have a North and a South. They might still have a North and a South. Yeah. Let's say Pac-12, if I can do that. Well, my question is, while we're looking at that, do you – I mean, yeah, here it is. I think it's all clogged together, so it'll be top two. So if these two and you knock each other off, you're both in top ten. I mean, does a one-loss Pac-12 champion that has played, let's say, for example, Oregon, um, and maybe beaten five ranked teams? I know they got smoked by number one Georgia. Does that get them in? Yeah, I mean, there's so much. Man, here's the other thing that's going to happen that you don't even know about is there's going to be somebody that shouldn't lose to an unranked team or his favorite to, to, to win big, and they're going to lose. So that's – I mean, I hope it's not my team, but, I mean, that's going to happen somewhere along the way, you know. Yeah. Let me ask you this before I know yeah. we're just – hey, we're just speculating what could happen, but do you disagree with the way the rankings are now? No, I agree. I agree with them. Uh, at least the top five or six, the main ones, yeah, I agree with these. I didn't really look on the back end. Um, so, yeah, I, I agree with them for this week. I did think the week before was a little disrespectful. I thought we maybe should have been – two or you guys won that whole dropping us down to three, but Hey, I like the added fuel to the fire. I think that motivated that team. So it was a win-win, but yeah, I, I agree with this. I mean, it, there's so much football left to be played, but if yeah. you know, you know, there's just going to be a loss between Ohio State and Michigan, but you know, if, if one of those teams is undefeated and TCU and Georgia, there's three of your teams. I said, Oh, would they put this in? They'll have that. They'll have that debate on game day, but don't, it don't matter, man. If you're from yeah. a power five undefeated, they're not going to leave you out. They're just not yeah. going to, you know. Okay. Still a lot of football yeah. play. Uh, the other thing I'll say, and I'm not yeah. going to get off subject here too much, but the yeah. one thing about what they do in some of these other conferences that I think they really ought to do, I think they're going to do at some point in time in the Big Ten as it continues to expand in the SEC. And ACC has talked about it, is that you have three teams you play every year, right? And then you have, boom, you play half the teams one year and you play half the teams the other year and then you play it in a, in a championship. And I think that's – I mean, don't you see that happening in the ACC, SEC, Big Ten? I see that all happening, man. <clears throat> and to be honest with you, I like it from a Ohio State standpoint, we'd always play Michigan. We would always play Penn State, okay? 
I, I'll guarantee those two. And the other one's probably Michigan State. And then not a final play. You know, I look at the other teams. I don't play Maryland or Rutgers and Indiana and every year. I mean, who cares? Jimmy Craig Corn, I don't care. From mm-hmm. Georgia's standpoint, who do you think the three teams would be? It would be Florida, right? And, I mean, you probably have that out of conference with Georgia Tech. But what, what would be the yeah. other two SEC teams you think you play? Um, I would say now just for maybe ranking, I mean, I think Auburn has been the longest, like, uh, longest – Longest route rivalry. I should know what the name of that is. Maybe Auburn because that's a West school. Okay. And then ten, maybe Tennessee, possibly. I'm trying to think of our third, maybe biggest rival. And I think they're up on the, you know, they're up on the up and up. Do you uh, test more than South Carolina? Yeah, we always play them every year because they're in the East. Well, so what I'm saying is if SEC went to, here you go, where you play three teams every year, then you play hat. What you think about it, man? Because, you know, what's the last time, what's the last time we played Texas AM? I mean, like sometimes we, five we, years we ago, play them. Play them. I think we've played, we played them once. I think we've played them once since they've been in there. And we've never been to a college station, which is crazy since they've been in the league. We've never been played at, at on the road at Texas a and which is weird. So that's the other thing that I think they ought to do, man. How many teams does the SEC have right now? I think it's 14. So if it's 14, you had – so, boom, if you take out yourself and you play these other three teams, there's 10 teams, right? right. And you're going to say, boom, we're going to play five one year, five the next year. You know, or is the one they had Oklahoma and um, Texas six one year, six the next year, right? And if I'm I'm looking about that, there's your nine game schedule, right? I'm thinking about right. that, right? So that means I think that's what I hope I hope that's what everything goes to because I think that's just gonna make it better for college football. And look, man, I, this this twelve team playoff it can't come fast enough, you know. When are, so when are they talking about it uh, doing? Oh, at least twenty twenty six, but maybe twenty twenty four. Just gotta throw some more money at it, you know. All right, gotcha. Any uh, anything anything you want to get off your chest on the way out? No, man. I mean, hey, look, I'm just just like you. I guess right now you're just trying to survive these next three games and get through it, and then get to an SEC championship. I'm trying to get through as an Ohio State fan. I'm trying to get through Indiana and a trap game at, at Maryland, so I can go ahead and give Michigan what's coming to them. There you go. Which hopefully is a big loss. <laughs> there you go. I like it. All right, well, that's another episode of Herschel Talkers, and we really appreciate uh, Angry Scott from the Brutal Truth Buckeyes podcast for coming on. Hey, and don't forget to like, subscribe. Like and subscribe again. Just get those subscribers up. All right, Scott, I appreciate it. All right, have a good one, Trey. You too, thanks.